Have you ever wondered why you are drawn to certain brands and not others? It's a question that might have crossed your mind as you found yourself reaching for the same brand of cereal, phone, or pair of shoes time and time again. But what is it that really makes us choose one product over another? Is it the quality, the price, or perhaps the fancy packaging? Well, it's a bit more complex than that. Welcome to the fascinating world of brand manipulation, a realm where psychology meets marketing and consumer behavior is subtly influenced. You see, our perceptions of brands, whether we realize it or not, play a massive role in our purchasing habits. And this perception is carefully crafted by companies to make their products more appealing. Consider the concept of brand perception. This is essentially how a brand is viewed and understood by the public. It includes everything from the brand's promise, experience, and personality to the emotions it evokes in its consumers. Brands spend millions, sometimes billions of dollars shaping this perception, creating an image that resonates with their target audience. Let's take a quick detour to the land of soda. Why do some people swear by Coca-Cola, while others wouldn't dream of straying from Pepsi? It's not just about the taste, it's about how these brands are perceived. Coca-Cola often positions itself as a brand associated with happiness and nostalgia, while Pepsi often appeals to the younger generation with its edgy and innovative image. But here's the catch. This perception isn't always rooted in reality. It's a carefully constructed facade, a narrative that is woven into every advertisement, every product, and every interaction. And this narrative is incredibly powerful. It can make us perceive a product to be of higher quality or more reliable or even more desirable simply because of the brand attached to it. So, the next time you find yourself reaching for that familiar brand, take a moment to ponder. Are you choosing it because it's genuinely the best product for you? Or are you under the spell of brand manipulation? Brand manipulation is a powerful tool that can influence our choices more than we realize. Think about your favorite coffee shop. Is it Starbucks? If yes, ever wondered why? Starbucks. It's more than just a coffee shop. It's an experience, a lifestyle, an escape. Yet have you ever stopped to question why you're willing to pay a premium for a cup of joe that you could probably make at home for a fraction of the cost? The answer lies in the masterful branding techniques Starbucks has employed to transform their coffee into a luxury experience. Starbucks is not in the coffee business serving people. They're in the people business serving coffee. They've created a unique language that customers use when ordering their drinks. A tall, grande, venti. These aren't just sizes. They're part of a shared language that makes you feel like you're part of an exclusive club every time you step into a Starbucks store. This language, exclusive to Starbucks, taps into our need for belonging and exclusivity. But it doesn't stop there. Starbucks has ingeniously positioned itself as a third place. A place that's not home or work, but a comfortable welcoming space where you can unwind, connect, or even work. It's an environment that encourages you to stay, to relax, and yes, to buy another cup of coffee. Starbucks doesn't sell coffee. They sell an experience, a carefully crafted, meticulously designed experience that makes you feel special. It's the power of their branding. The unique language, the third place concept, the carefully curated ambiance. All these elements work together to create a perception of luxury, of exclusivity, of comfort. In the end, it's not about the coffee. It's about how Starbucks makes you feel. And that feeling, that's what you're really paying for. It's a brilliant strategy, and it's why Starbucks has managed to make their brand synonymous with luxury coffee. Starbucks has successfully created a brand image that makes consumers feel special and willing to pay more. And there lies the power of branding. It's not about the product, it's about the perception. Apple, a brand associated with innovation and exclusivity, but what makes it so irresistible? Well, it's no secret that Apple has a knack for making us crave their latest gadgets. To understand why, let's dive into the psychological tricks that this tech giant uses to keep us reaching for our wallets. Firstly, Apple leverages the principle of scarcity. Simply put, the less there is of something, the more we want it. 
Apple creates this illusion of scarcity by limiting the number of products available at launch. This scarcity often leads to long lines and overnight campouts at Apple stores worldwide, just to be one of the first to get the latest iPhone or MacBook. Secondly, Apple employs the concept of exclusivity. They've positioned themselves as a premium brand, and owning an Apple product is seen as a status symbol. Apple products are not just devices, they're a lifestyle, a statement about who you are, but it doesn't stop there. Apple's product launch techniques are a masterclass in building anticipation and creating a sense of urgency. They tease new releases with mysterious invitations and cryptic messages, sparking speculation and buzz in the tech world. The suspense keeps consumers on their toes, eagerly awaiting the official product reveal. Once the product is launched, Apple keeps up the momentum. They highlight the innovative features of their new product, making it seem like a must-have. And the countdown timers on their website? That's another psychological trick to create a sense of urgency. To make you feel like if you don't act now, you'll miss out. Remember the frenzy when the AirPods were released? Or the hype around every new iPhone launch? That's Apple's psychological manipulation at work, making us desire their products, making us believe we need them. But it's not all negative. These strategies have helped Apple create a loyal fan base. People who will defend the brand, eagerly anticipate new releases, and proudly display their Apple products. Apple's manipulation strategies have effectively created a cult-like following. So the next time you feel the urge to purchase the latest Apple gadget, remember these psychological tricks. They might just save you from an impulse buy. Advertising is everywhere, but how does it manipulate our consumer habits? It's a question worth pondering, isn't it? Let's dive into the rabbit hole. One of the most potent tools in the arsenal of advertisers is social proof. It's the idea that if everyone else is doing it, it must be good. Advertisers will often showcase testimonials, reviews, and endorsements to convince us that their product or service is worth our hard-earned cash. After all, if your favorite celebrity or thousands of other consumers are raving about it, it must be worth it, right? Then there's the frightfully effective fear of missing out or FOMO, as it's more commonly known. This technique is particularly prevalent in the digital age, where limited time offers and flash sales are the norm. Advertisers create a sense of urgency, making us believe that if we don't act now, we'll miss out on something extraordinary. It's a powerful motivator that often leads us to make impulsive buying decisions. But perhaps the most influential technique is the use of emotions to sway our purchasing decisions. Advertisers are masters of emotional manipulation, crafting narratives that tug at our heartstrings or evoke a sense of nostalgia. They appeal to our desires, our dreams, our fears, and our insecurities. They paint a picture of a better life, a happier you, all attainable through the purchase of their product or service. And let's not forget the subtle use of colors, music, and imagery, all carefully chosen to elicit specific emotional responses. A serene beach scene with calming music might be used to sell a holiday package, while bright colors and upbeat music might be used to promote a new smartphone or a trendy fashion line. In essence, advertising is a psychological game, one that brands have become incredibly adept at playing. They understand our desires, our fears, and our insecurities, and use these to craft compelling narratives that drive us to consume. So the next time you find yourself reaching for your wallet, take a moment to think. Are you making a choice based on your needs and wants? Or are you being swayed by clever advertising techniques? Advertising is a powerful form of brand manipulation that plays on our emotions and fears. So how can we protect ourselves from being manipulated by these brands? Great question, and I'm glad you asked. It's all about becoming a conscious consumer, and it's simpler than you might think. First off, let's talk about research. In this digital age, information is just a few clicks away. Before making a purchase, take some time to look into the product, read reviews, compare prices, and understand the company's values. Is the company ethical? Do they value sustainability? Are they transparent about their practices? These are all questions that can help guide your purchasing decisions. 
Next, let's tackle the difference between needs and wants. Needs are essentials, the things we can't live without, like food, shelter, and clothing. Wants, on the other hand, are things we'd like to have but don't necessarily need for survival. It's easy to blur the lines between the two, especially when brands are so good at making us believe we need their products. But by being aware of this distinction, we can make more mindful choices. Another key aspect of being a conscious consumer is understanding advertising tactics. Advertisements are designed to draw you in, to make you feel a certain way, to convince you that you need a product. They play on our emotions, our fears, our desires. But once we're aware of these tactics, we can see through the smoke and mirrors. We can make decisions based on our needs and values, not on clever marketing strategies. Finally, remember that every dollar you spend is a vote. When you buy a product, you're supporting the company that makes it. So consider what you're voting for. Are you voting for ethical practices, for sustainability, for transparency? Or are you voting for manipulation and deceit? Becoming a conscious consumer isn't about denying ourselves the things we enjoy. It's about making informed decisions, about knowing where our money is going and what it's supporting. It's about not being manipulated into buying things we don't need or supporting companies that don't align with our values. Remember, knowledge is power. Be a conscious consumer and don't let brands manipulate your decisions.